Hi there everybody, Nikki here. In this video today, I'm going to be conducting a bit of an experiment. And that experiment is that I'm going to try to be myself more with everybody um, and share with people some of the not so nice areas um, of, of my own desires that I've had um, and that I've not been wanting to be honest about with myself firstly but also with everybody else who uh, I've been in contact with or has ever watched any videos on this channel. I want to try and correct that. The video today is focusing predominantly on the area of accepting my facade uh, because I feel I feel this is the area that I'm kind of trying to work my way through at the moment. And also after recently watching through some of the um, Divine Truth um, developing my loving self-assistance group and hearing some of Jesus' own uh, reflections about the whole area of accepting a facade, it seems that um, a lot of people who have heard Divine Truth are quite stuck on this area. Um, I totally get it because for the last six months I've been really stuck on this area myself and you know not wanting to see things or not wanting to see desires of mine that are actually quite unloving towards others mostly. Um, so I want to share with people you know some of the realizations that I've been having over the last few months concerning this area and so hopefully you know you guys get a much more accurate representation of who I am and where I am right now. So the first thing that I want to share with everybody is I've not worked through uh, my facade. You know I've kind of, I, I feel if I'm being honest that I've kind of not really worked through the major areas of my facade still. Um, I feel that I've worked through some areas, um, some areas that are not too big. Uh, so some areas that I didn't have as much fear or terror um, concerning really. Um, I feel like I've kind of gone through uh, some areas. However, for the most part, I feel like I've kind of really wanted to avoid, um, you know, looking at some of the ways in which I've sinned cause harm to others and also to myself. When I was in Australia on the Divine Truth uh, volunteer training program, I received quite a bit of feedback from both Jesus and Mary uh, concerning a few major areas of my own uh, personal facade. Now, one of these areas was the fact that I um, basically had quite a strong resistance to being who I was in every moment and in every interaction as I am right now. So um, Jesus actually shared with me that he felt I have got quite a deep desire to feel that I'm a better person than I actually am, like in any moment. And so, you know, he, he, he explained to me that this has caused a lot of like my own issues in my life where I've had certain addictions with other men uh, particularly um, but also as well it's contributed quite a lot to my own unloving actions towards others so I've been finding that just this one area of my facade has got a lot of other like addictions and um, like connecting points in um, which I've been trying to kind of look at and deconstruct to kind of get to the truth of uh, the causes as to why I've had that desire uh, in the past. And, you know, there's quite a lot in there in the sense of I basically have always kind of looked for a feeling of approval from other men. And what I've tended to do when doing that is I've kind of, looked for approval from men who have kind of been quite superior and arrogant in their general approach to life um, and I've kind of um, tried to you know find guys like that to associate with 
to then make me feel better about myself and to then feel like I'm kind of elevating myself up as well but it's like not a real like elevation in terms of love because it's kind of like a desire of me to be a worse person and to actually feel more superior and better than other people. Jesus pretty bluntly put it to me that, you know, if I don't look at this, I, it's going to severely impact um, the things that I can, I can do and acting on my own personal desires to share divine truth. And at that time, I had this feeling like I wanted God to kind of give me things that I like felt I wanted and felt that I was ready for. And uh, Jesus explained that God would, wouldn't ever do that for me because it would then make myself feel like I was more better than other people. And, you know, it would contribute more to my own facade in actually, you know, feeling even more superior to others, but also as well feeling like more arrogant towards others too. And he said that, you know, because God loves all of us, God will never give us something that God knows wouldn't be good for either ourselves, well, for both ourselves and other people. And I've kind of not wanted to look at that area of my life. Um, and really, I've, you know, the last couple of months after coming back to England, I've been really stuck on kind of making sense of all of that. Um, I've been stuck on actually, you know, ultimately seeing the sin of how I've been acting towards others. The way that I've kind of acted in my facade in order to get this feeling of approval from other men is I've kind of like wanted to do what they wanted me to do and I had this feeling that if I did, you know, A, B and C, then I'd get D from them, which is actually a feeling of approval. Looking at it logically, um, you know, even me doing stuff, it's like I'm not doing it sincerely anyway. I'm kind of doing it just to get this feeling from the, the person I'm with, you know, the, the other man that I'm with in the situation. And, um, you know, it's not really loving anybody else around me or the person that I'm, you know, interacting with either. Um, and so, you know, when I was in Australia, I, you know, just automatically acted in that way towards Jesus. And, you know, like I found like pretty quickly, I started feeling like confused inside of my own heart and feeling angry as well like and I didn't even know like why I was feeling confused and angry it, it didn't make sense to me um, at the time and that was now looking back it was you know Jesus could feel I had a demand on him to you know for him to basically give me approval and you know if I didn't get that feeling from him even after, you know, I felt that I listened to certain instructions that I got given and sometimes I didn't do that anyway, but, you know, um, I felt that, you know, if I did do that, then I should, you know, it, it like, it sh I should get this approval. You know, for me in my heart, it was like this mathematical formula that I had in my heart, even though it was a false belief and, you know, wasn't really true. That's kind of just how it felt for me. Jesus couldn't really, you know, like he wouldn't give me that approval anyway because it was an addiction in me, but also as well, um, it would contribute more to my facade if he did do that um, because it would then make me feel like I was better than everybody else, like automatically, you know, and I, I felt like I would have felt that, you know, I'm, you know, getting everything and, you know, I, I've got a, a lot more understanding about about things and other people. And that's the whole, you know, reason why I've had such a problem with this because I've kind of got that feeling in the past and it automatically, you know, made me feel better than I actually was. And then it actually contributed more to me being unloving towards other people and making myself feel better than other people, 
when obviously that is a really unloving desire. In the current world today, um, you know, it's quite a normal thing, I, I reckon, to kind of get given tasks to do. Let's say if you're in a job, you know, you get given tasks by your manager or whatever, and, you know, you just go about doing, you know, doing your jobs. And when it's done, it equals either, you know, a reward in some way. So you get, you know, good praise or whatever from your manager, um, or, you know, you get a, a bet you can get into a, a promoted position or you can, you know, like go home or whatever after you've done your work. And in all the jobs that I've had in my life, that's, that has been the case. However, the problem that I've had is I've expected that I should get those things if I did whatever the person told me that I should do first. And that in itself is a false belief really, because, you know, it's one thing, um, you know, if you're volunteering or want to be of service to somebody to follow their instructions, because I reckon that is like an act of love, but it's another thing to just do what somebody wants you to do. And then you have a feeling like right now that person should give me whatever it is I want from them because I just did all of this for them. And you know, that was just a big thing for me that happened in Australia. And when I didn't get that from Jesus, I was like really confused and unsure and I didn't know what was going on. I felt angry um, and yeah, it was just really, really confronting uh, to be honest. Um, you know, I didn't even know what was going on. Um, you know, it was like a completely foreign thing for me to feel because I just felt, you know, that was normal. And for the 27 years of my life, I've kind of acted in that way automatically. Um, so yeah, it did hit me quite intensely initially. And it did end up in me actually being quite resistive when I was out in Australia and withdrawing myself. However, now after I've reflected a lot, my withdrawal was because I felt angry, really. Um, and I wanted to kind of back away from the situation, um, you know, because I didn't really want to feel my anger firstly. Um, and secondly, I didn't want to look at what was going on in me that was unloving towards other people. Um, so the, I felt there's a couple of things there going on. So I did put a, quite a large demand on Jesus to give me, you know, those feelings. And it's, you know, it's unloving to put a demand on anybody. I kind of, you know, only did things to get an approval feeling from Jesus. And if he didn't give them to me, I then felt resistive and I backed off, you know, and got angry. And, you know, that's really unfair to Jesus because, you know, for somebody on the receiving end of a demand, you can feel that if you don't do it for a person, they're going to get angry. And in a way, uh, me having that demand, it's like an exploitation on the person who I want that feeling from. Like it's an exploitation of almost their like lack of worth in a way. This desire or demand really that I've got that I place on other people for them to give me a feeling of approval, it has been actually the main uh, driving force behind my desire to share divine truth. So for example, I realized that when I was, when I created the Divine Truth Hub Forum, I, like when I was administering the, the forum, the main feeling I had uh, was, oh, uh, what are Jesus and Mary gonna think about this? Um, have I done it right in their, in their eyes and um, you know it was more me trying to be like the good pupil and to get a feeling from from them that I've done the right thing in this situation and you know really I wasn't being just truthful because I wasn't doing whatever I, I had to do on the forum um, is just doing the right thing from God's perspective the truthful thing I was more motivated by feeling like if I do this, 
might it mean I, I, I could get more approval from Jesus and Mary? And, you know, that happened a lot on the forum. And I had this feeling that if I did something on the forum, like took some kind of ad administrative action on the forum, and I got feedback that I did the right thing, I then started feeling like, oh, I do know more. Like, I, this, you know, this is good. I, I understand that. Um, and the thing is, like, I kind of got really carried away with feeling like I knew more than they actually did any time that, you know, I got some good feedback. And that really got, has got me in all kinds of trouble. And it's, it's caused me to act in really unloving ways to other people um, because, you know, I've kind of like, I got quite like big headed about certain, you know, progression that I thought I made initially. And, you know, every time that I got some good feedback, I automatically, in my heart, it wasn't even a, a thing, like it wasn't a conscious, well, I didn't feel it was a conscious choice. I just straight away felt, oh, I know more than all these other people about this stuff. I'd just like to make one thing abundantly clear here. And that is receiving good feedback was not the issue that I was referring to. The issue was how I internally interpreted that feedback based on my own facade and addictions. I was associating the feeling with having a high sense of worth than somebody else. And I've realized over the last few weeks that internally in my heart, I've got this connection between spiritual progression or what I feel is spiritual progression and worth. So I feel that I, I, I've always felt that if I, you know, progress spiritually, it also means I feel better than, you know, somebody who's not as spiritually progressed in my own perception, logically looking at it from, uh, you know, God's perspective and a divine truth principle perspective, that is totally not accurate because one thing that Jesus and Mary have taught all the time is that we all have the same value or feeling of worth from God's perspective. You know, not one person is actually better than another person or has more value than another person. Regardless of uh, spiritual condition, whether, you know, somebody is in the highest celestial sphere compared to somebody in the lowest kind of hellish condition, like from God's perspective, they both have the same worth. Whereas I have never really understood that myself in my own heart. And I'm still, you know, trying to get to the cause as to why I've always had this feeling. Um, I'm not at the cause yet, um, but you know, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like a bit of a competitive feeling and in the world today, that kind of attitude and um, the way in which you live your life in that way is rewarded quite a lot. And in, you know, sport as well, for example, you know, that's really, you know, looked up to and a lot of sports people have that same mentality and same emotional state. Um, and throughout my whole life, I've kind of looked up to that. Um, and, you know, it's kind of fostered that false belief within me. And to be honest with you guys, I am finding it difficult to kind of break that connection that I've got internally. I've got so many issues on the worth side. I've acted in this facade that if I, you know, where I've acted in certain ways, it makes me feel that I've got some worth, but also it makes me feel that I'm more valued and more important than somebody else when that's not true. But also under that, I've got all these feelings that I feel like I've got no worth. Um, you know, like I've kind of avoided the actual deep hurt that I've got with my dad and the feelings of a, a lack of worth that I got in the way that he treated me on pretty much a daily basis for the first 18 years of my life. Um, you know, I kind of avoided all of that and I've wanted to avoid it all. 
Um, and I've kind of wanted to feel like I shouldn't have to deal with that pain. Like I feel I've had this feeling like I should be able to, um, to act in certain addictions of mine. Like I should be able to feel better than other people. Um, you know, I should get all of these things that I've always wanted in my life. Like, why should I have to go through all of this? You know, my dad uh, did all of this to me. God, you should make him pay. You know, I had, I've, I've had all of these angry feelings about it and all these angry justifications about wanting to act in my addiction. Now I can see that it wasn't just this impulsive thing that I did. It, it definitely was a choice that I had. I've had my whole life to act in that way. It's been really hard for me to kind of go through some of this part of my facade because at first I had all of this, you know, self-judgment about, you know, the issue and this feeling of, yeah, that I've acted, that I'm better than other people. You know, at first I, you know, went down that route and wanted to avoid my life and zone out of things, um, which really was, again, another part of my facade of me, you know, not wanting to deal with the actual emotions, um, which I can see now. I think it, after going through some of that anger, it then dawned on me that I've actually justified like hurting other people just so I can avoid my own pain. The pain that's in me from my childhood is in me. And, you know, the way I've acted before to try and avoid that pain has not, you know, got rid of any of the pain that I actually feel. The fact that I have actually purposefully acted in ways to hurt other people to avoid uh, that pain has caused a lot of my own current pain. Even when I was in Australia at the assistance group uh, just before the uh, volunteer training program, so the um, understanding God's laws and principles, um, I, when I was present at that group, uh, when I was formulating my own questions, in my own time before each session started. Um, reflecting back now to the feelings I had, I was more driven by this feeling of, oh, if I asked this question, um, would it then mean I'd get more approval from Jesus because I'm asking like a question that maybe other people haven't uh, thought about yet. And, you know, I wasn't really feeling my own feelings about what I truly, the questions I truly had and truly want answered sincerely. The times when Jesus did answer my questions in the group, it then gave me this feeling that I knew more than everybody else in the room and that, you know, I'm more um, important, essentially. Looking back at some of the videos on YouTube, from that group and seeing like my feelings and you know feeling my feelings um, now um, you know it's it's really it feels really kind of uh, uncomfortable for me to see because um, you know like I could feel that every time I got a question answered I had it, like I felt this feeling of like like everyone look at me look at me look at me. Um, you know, look at, look at what I know, look at what I know. Um, you know, you guys, you don't know, you know, what all the things that I know, look at this. And, you know, that's the feeling that I had. And, you know, it, it, it was getting really out of hand, like in all aspects of what I was doing with Divine Truth, really. It came through on the forum that I created strongly. It came through on my prior videos on this channel um, as well. It came through at the assistance group. Um, you know, it happened when I was on the volunteer training program. I, you know, was more focused on trying to get this feeling of approval from Jesus than even considering anybody else there. I was acting really unethically, you know, like I wasn't kind of seeing anyone else as equal because I was just so kind of tunnel focused on this feeling of wanting this feeling from Jesus that I totally really disregarded everybody else 
and I wasn't really, you know, I, I wasn't loving to everybody else. And it's not that I wasn't loving to everybody else. I was just really, I was actually being really unloving to everybody else. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of just it always affected me. It's like been the number one feeling that I've always felt in my heart in any interaction is of this feeling of wanting to get this certain approval feeling from somebody who I feel um, is worth me getting that approval from. And that in itself is a totally false concept and belief um, because as I said before, my own judgment or feeling that a certain person is worth getting that um, feeling from has been really skewed initially and actually it's been quite opposite so the people that I felt I wanted to get that feeling off were actually people who were felt more superior more arrogant and then somebody let's say who isn't and who's actually humble and has a more humble viewpoint of themselves I kind of tend to kind of dismiss those people to seek that approval and feeling from you know the the arrogant person and then that would then make me feel better as a person so you know like a lot of my own beliefs have been totally opposite and you know totally re like inaccurate really i'd like to also make it clear here that i'm not uh, referring to me wanting approval from jesus because jesus uh, was either being arrogant or superior because that's not true uh, Jesus is the total opposite of that you know he's the most humble person that I've ever met uh, by a long way and he's extremely ethical and fair uh, with everybody it's been very challenging for me to first even like have the concept that maybe some of my feelings are wrong um, but then it's been a different story as well to kind of get through some of the judgment that I've had and some of the you know feelings that I didn't really want to let myself feel you know some of the real anger I felt you know about things and you know my own justifications for my unloving behavior towards others um you know it's taken me a long time to to even start seeing it properly around a month or so ago um, my girlfriend Bex, she put on a Divine Truth uh, video on YouTube that we watched and it was one where Jesus and Mary just kind of had a, an informal discussion with the audience after I believe it was one of Mary's book group uh, sessions and in the discussion Jesus and Mary were just encouraging the people in the audience who had a desire to share Divine Truth with others to you know like encouraging people to kind of act in that way but to remember you know humility and to try and be themselves at all times Jesus and Mary said that um, you know don't try to pretend that you know things that you don't yet know otherwise you'll come across as really insincere and arrogant and you know that's exactly what I did um, in in my videos on this YouTube channel I feel like this whole diligence thing that I've been doing or project, like portraying this facade to people that, you know, I'm this, this model follower of divine truth. Um, like there's actually so much like inherently uh, flawed about acting in that way because, you know, it firstly, it kind of, people don't get a sense of who I am it's like me almost just mimicking certain things that I've heard Jesus and Mary share and really you know mimicking things that you've heard someone say is actually really it's really easy to do and you're not being yourself when you do that um, and you know that's that's just been a major kind of driving factor in all my facade like in everything I've done I've tried to be the good boy and I've tried to be diligent I've tried to follow you know all the rules that were set out and while that you know is good in in a way you know I'm not saying to go the total opposite either and just to totally rebel against everything because I realized like in my childhood that the feelings I had was that I wanted to rebel against my uh, parents, parents' authority. And I just 
never felt I could. I kind of like, you know, put this other layer on top of that rebellious feeling of just kind of like fully detuning myself from my desires and what I truly felt at every moment to just appear like this good boy. And when I did, I'll then get feelings of approval and love which really aren't true feelings of approval and love. It's, you know, fake feelings that I got, you know, from, from my environment, particularly, you know, my parents when I was a child. Um, and, you know, I've realized that, you know, I have acted in that way on my videos, you know, I have kind of put out this facade to people that I know what I'm talking about, you know, I'm doing really well. And, you know, I'm following things by the book you know and really you know I've had to go through this feeling of like just trying to give that whole approach up because I felt my whole life it served me well and I felt like the only good things in my life that I've had is because I you know took that approach and you know I was really resistive to kind of even looking at giving that up and then to even let myself start feeling some of the anger I felt you know um some of the actual really rebellious feelings that you know were in me towards my family and you know towards God um, you know which obviously aren't true feelings towards God but they're feelings that I've had to realize I've realized I've had to let myself express to then just get more real about some of them, some more of my own unloving desires it's been such a huge like eye-opening thing um, to kind of let myself see some of my own loving desires that I hadn't let myself see before, um, you know, because I was so busy trying to, um, you know, follow all the rules, um, you know, when really my feelings are that I just wanted to, I was just angry about following all the rules, um, but I just felt I had to. And, you know, like a lot of my anger is about not that I never felt I could just be myself and that anger has just been stored in me for so long and um, and you know like I've not wanted to give it up you know like because it's the only thing that I felt I got anything out of and um, yeah it's just been really difficult to be honest for me to you know kind of let myself see that and to feel some of that you know but it's been a bit of a relief as well because, you know, for the first time, I'm not just trying to force my way through things, you know, like trying to force my way through things that I've heard is the right way to do it. Um, and my feelings are that I don't want to do that. It's helped me kind of, you know, just reflect a bit and feel how I feel and be like, you know, actually, I don't want to do that. Or, you know, I do want to do that. Although it I feel it helped me progress to a certain point. Um, it's like I get this feeling that it's still an unloving, you know, way to live and to act. I've been quite detuned from a lot of my desire in my life as a result. Um, you know, like I've never really um, felt about the things that I've wanted to do. Uh, I've always kind of just got along with what others have said to me about certain things or what they want to do. And, you know, I've always kind of just been like, oh, okay, I'll go along with that. I've never really known how I felt about a lot of things. Uh, to be honest, I'm, you know, I've got a long way to go on it, but um, it's really helping me just understand more about desire, you know, and, it's helping me want to see the unloving desires more than anything. And I've been finding that once I've been letting myself see the unloving desires, like my initial feeling straight away is why? Like why? Um, why do I why do I have that feeling? Why do I want to feel better than other people? You know, why do I want to portray this false image of myself to others and also to myself? Um, whereas before when I was being challenged on this stuff, I felt like, oh, I don't really want to look at it. I was like, no, I, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm not bothered. Like I'm being unloving and I don't care. But that was because I had the feelings of anger and justification at that moment in time. 
and I realised that after I let myself feel some of that anger um, about my justifications to sin, I've kind of now, you know, been more accepting of my actual unloving desires and I've been more willing to kind of like try and, you know, work through them because I can feel like how damaging they are. Um, and yeah, that's just been a huge learning curve that I've kind of been slowly, um, you know, uh, looking at and trying to let myself explore uh, further. Really, when I came home, I was in just a bit of a huff and it was like a huff with God, really. Like I wanted God to change and, you know, so that I didn't have to change, so that I didn't have to see some of my own loving desires and to see how I've been hurting other people. You know, I had this feeling that I wanted God to change to fit my false definition of love. And, you know, I, I, I sat in that for a couple of months after I got home. And, you know, the pain in, in, in my life that I was experiencing got more intense. Um, and yeah, I, I just, you know, started realizing that like, I have to sort this out. I've just got to let myself just get met, go mental and just feel some of this anger. It's been really interesting for me to, you know, kind of go through some of that tantrum anger type feelings um, because I didn't feel like I had any of that in me, you know, or, you know, that was again part of my facade before. After looking back and re-watching some of the videos on this YouTube channel that I uploaded and created uh, beforehand, um, you know, I've been reflecting and I've, I've, I've seen that, like really, like I, I was probably 95%, I'd say, in my facade and addictions and 5%, if that, maybe two or 3% being my real self. Whereas before, I felt in my facade, I felt like I was being 90, 95% my real self. And, you know, maybe there was like five or 10% of facade and addiction maybe going on. Um, and again, I found that that, you know, my beliefs beforehand were like way off the mark. And again, it wasn't just way off the mark. It was like totally flipped, totally opposite. Um, and you know, like the way in which I was acting and feeling on my videos to people was really, you know, this feeling of, you know, like that I've got my stuff together. I know what I'm talking about. People should listen to me, you know, like I've gone through a lot of things and, you know, I, I, I have some, some authority in what I'm sharing. And, you know, to be honest with you, that none of that's true. Um, I'm, you know, learning all of this stuff for the first time, just as most of you guys are. And I've kind of been reflecting and, you know, the channel uh, that I've created, I called it the Divine Truth Experience channel. Um, I haven't had a sense of integrity to the name of the channel. Um, you know, really, if I was being more honest beforehand, uh, I should have called the channel something like, um, please everybody tell Nikki how great he is channel um, because that's how I acted and if I was being truthful in my facade that's what I would have called it and um, I just want to kind of start correcting some of that stuff and I want to be more uh, I want to have more integrity to the channel um, and to share with people like how I am right now and to be more of who I am um, because, you know, divine truth, not just for me, but probably for a lot of people, it's been a real tough slog in some ways. Um, you know, like I've been realizing that it's not as easy as I thought to myself it was and that I made out towards others. Um, it's that's just not been true. That's not been an accurate reflection of the feelings that I've had, uh, particularly the feelings that I've had recently and the feelings that I've been seeing more of my facade and some of my loving self. Um, you know, like I want to, you know, get some integrity back on the channel and, 
you know, just share fully with people where I'm at, um, you know, warts and all, <laughs> really. Um, so I'm going to be hoping to do that way more so than what I did before. On top of that, I do want to apologise for to, to anybody who's watched any of my other videos on the channel or anybody who's interacted with me and I have kind of um, projected or you know, displayed and acted in my facade towards them. I just came in really into the whole divine truth thing, all guns blazing, really, you know, all gun co about it, thinking, you know, as this maverick about it all. And, um, you know, like, I've just been realizing that, like, I need to wind my neck in a bit um, and, you know, be more real with myself about where I'm at. A lot of my desires have been really unloving uh, to other people. You know, like I said, I have had this feeling that, you know, I feel like I want to be better than others. I've been really selfish to other people. Um, I've not really had this feeling of giving uh, towards others, really. Really, the truth is that I've, I've been finding uh, the divine love path incredibly difficult for the last six months particularly um, you know sometimes I felt like it's been the worst thing for you know that I've, I've come across in a way um, you know because I, I kind of get this feeling as well that like if I try to avoid this stuff you know like if I go back to how my life was before it would just be even more painful and so I've had this feeling like well, I'm bloody damned if I, I do and damned if I don't kind of thing. Um, you know, that's how I felt for the last six months. I've um, not volunteered uh, specifically for any Divine Truth related things before, you know, such as transcribing or any of the Divine Truth clips because I've had this feeling like I feel that I'm more important than that and the feeling of that, you know, those those jobs are too small and they're, you know, like beneath me in a way. Um, and again, I, I learned more about this when I was in Australia on the Divine Truth uh, volunteer training program. Um, the kind of feelings that I've had are not congruous with the person who has an attitude that they want to serve uh, other people and yeah like um it's been tricky to kind of let myself see it for what it is um and and you know wanting to be transparent with everybody you know about some of the issues that i've been facing recently um i've kind of in some of my videos after i got back from australia i've kind of like fed it out in drips and drabs in a way, like some of the feedback that I got, I've not been really, you know, fully open and honest with everybody about the feedback that I received. Um, and really, again, that's another selfish act because if I was being transparent and if I was transparent earlier, then it not only would have probably helped other people more and maybe issues other people have been having in their life, but it would have massively helped me as well um, to accept some of these areas of my facade a lot quicker if I just had a more of a humble attitude, uh, essentially. Also, I'd just like to share one more thing uh, before I finish the video today. And that is in the Draw My Life video that I created. Um, you know, I've after I've had some more of these realizations and felt through some more of my own anger issues um, I rewatched the video back and I was in this feeling of oh you know I wish I didn't do anything I wish I didn't create the forum I wish I didn't you know like um, you know do some of the things that I did um, you know I was more in blame of, of, of my parents uh, in the video particularly towards my dad I had way more of a feeling of blame there and almost in a way I could also feel that 
there was a bit of this commiseration feeling that I had in the video too. You know, I wanted other people to try and see the, to try and understand my life and to understand that I had it really bad and things, um, you know, and it was a bit self-involved in a way, the video, you know, in terms of some of the feelings, like I think the video could have been a lot better and it would have been, you know, a lot more valid if I, you know, had more sort of a feeling of self-responsibility. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, uh, to correct that. Since I received, you know, the feedback in Australia about some of these big areas on my own facade, I have had quite a feeling of blame, uh, you know, towards my parents, um, but particularly towards my dad. I've kind of been in a feeling of like wallowing in some self-pity and feeling that my life was so hard and, um, you know, like I've not been taking personal responsibility uh, for, you know, the injuries that are in me. It's one thing that I've kind of got the injuries anyway, you know, like, cause they did happen and I do have a lot of really painful emotions in me from my childhood. Um, but it's another thing for me to then, you know, act in a really childish way, but not in a childlike way in a good way, but like a childish way. It doesn't excuse my own unloving actions towards other people that I've taken because I wanted to avoid and emotionally have this feeling of refusal to feel um, some of the pain that I've caused others and some of the pain that's in me from my childhood. But yeah, that brings me to the end of this video. I hope that what I shared allows you to feel me more and you don't feel like you have to work as much to feel my true feelings and what's coming out of me that's not real and facade -y. I'd also like to thank both Jesus and Mary for the feedback they've ever gifted to me, particularly the feedback they gifted to me in Australia. Um, I was quite a difficult person to be around and I was quite cranky a lot of the time and I didn't see the feedback as a gift at the time. Um, however, after being back in England and reflecting a heck of a lot about the feedback I got and working through some of the emotions that I've had, I can totally see that everything they shared with me has been true and accurate so far. And yeah, I'm really grateful for that because I feel if I didn't receive the feedback uh, from them and they weren't um ethical with me and standing up for the truth with me um you know i would have carried on acting in this way towards others and it would have just caused caused so much harm to others and also to myself in the long run i'd just like to thank you all for having the perseverance you know those of you guys who have subscribed uh, to the channel and have watched my videos i really just want to thank you guys for that um, and I, I hope that i can be more myself with everybody um, from here on in. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys.